Bandwidth for all shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads web hosting. For a fast, affordable and reliable Australian server with fantastic support, contact Aussie Tech Heads web hosting at aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's best hosting service. Episode 449 for the 6th of August 2015 with a question. Have you upgraded to Windows 10 yet? Yes. Well, there's plenty of us here that have and there's some that haven't. But uh, let's get into that in a second. Let's uh, see who is, who's on the panel. But before we do that, we must, of course, recognise the wonderful athwebhosting.com.au. So go to there if you need some web hosting. Register a domain. There's, I think, oh, there's about, I don't know, 100 domains you can register, uh, different uh, extensions. .coms, of course, and there's, oh, I think you can even do a triple X if you, if you want to. So uh, get involved. All right. athwebhosting.com.au. <coughs> Oh, that, that cough. Is that a hurry up, Glenn Cough? That's from Will. Hey, Will. No, that's, that's me knowing I'm about to speak and not being able to cough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How you doing, Will? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. A bit chilly here tonight. It's like yeah. two degrees. It has been so for the last two So does that mean days. you're a chilly willy? Chilly willy. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, I've got the heater on, so I'm, I'm cheating. But uh, And who, who's in the middle box? The middle box, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? I'm very good. Excellent. Good. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, it's been cold in Sydney. Yeah, yeah it has been very cold. <laughs> yes. Laws, he's on holidays. That's because he's got shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Jace, how you doing? Good, thanks, mate. Ooh. Doing really well. Been That's... having a lot of fun, you know, building up Linux servers and converting old ones to Hyper-V and stuff. Oh, that <laughs> doesn't that sound good fun? Look, Hyper-V's you, great. You've leaned forward. You've, you've, you've become bigger. Hey, I'm on the like, an easy diet, so hopefully that won't be too long. All right, here we go. Hang on. I'll just move you down. How's that? Nice. See? I can do, Feel these. Better already. I can do these sort of things. All right, so welcome. Okay, now, the question at the, t- at the start of the show, Windows 10. Well, well, I'll tell you what happened to me. My experience, the laptop uh, went through okay, okay. I needed to put the touchpad driver in uh, because I lost my, you know, the scroll, you know, your slide finger slide thing yeah touch pad I'm, I'm with you <laughs> yeah but no but no well, max Change have it the but the normal pcs the old pcs you know how you just slide your two fingers to move the yeah. screen up and down that's only like new Mac. that's only new for us that's yeah. that's, that's oh right. sorry get yeah. with max it, had it yeah. forever <laughs> so um so i had to get an, an, an updated driver uh the laptop i don't know look i reckon it's look to be honest i think it's a little bit just a a, a, a b slow you know on the on transitioning right. and and all that sort of stuff. Well, I'm thinking about doing a fresh install because I, it usually is better on a fresh. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that it is a little bit just that that little bit slow on the you know you click things and and the everywhere I've seen people have been saying it's a lot faster. One of my friends um, plugs his guitar into an audio system and then that goes into the computer. He said there was always a massive delay. And uh, he could never get rid of it in Windows 8.1. Windows 10, bam, everything's super fast. And well, no I suppose certain it. things would probably work well. Um, mm. I noticed the boot up is a bit slower. Oh, um, okay. On an upgraded. Mine's just as fast. Everything's yeah. fast Well, that's me. good. Mm. Windows, oh, well, then again, my Windows was, I had a lot of, you know, starting programs. So, yep. you know, Dropbox and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. But, get, but when I'm in there, it's fine. It's perfect. It's good. Mm. He's good. He's done. Yeah, well, you know, look, I went to, I got a Lenovo laptop, went to the, the Lenovo, downloaded all the Windows 10 drivers, installed them all. Uh, look, I'm not, look, I don't want to bag it. Look, I'm, I'm going to upgrade everything in the house to Windows 10. Are you going to be but, Mr. Negative? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just want to give my, this is my view. This is my view. Your, is, your honest opinion. Yeah, I, I don't like the, the interface. The, the, it's very plain. I'd much rather, I'm still looking at Windows 8 in front of me here. Oh, it's, really? I You're just it. in love with it's Windows 8. A, Windows 8. The only person who finally loved Windows 8. Now 10's out, he's like, oh, and, Windows 8 was... And mind you, gentlemen, this is, this is the same person that, that said, and I quote, 
Windows Vista wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. That was eight years after it took it out of the box, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, uh, you know, I mean, it, he, he seems to be a bit of a contrarian, Mr. Mr. Goodman. Yeah. He'll no. say the opposite of what the, the no. nine billion other people. <laughs> <laughs> but he's allowed his opinion, however yeah, wrong um, it may be. I tried uh, the upgrade didn't work so i did the delete everything force upgrade delete mm-hmm. everything force upgrade delete everything force upgrade worked <laughs> haven't installed another driver application anything, yeah, I, anything I did just that too i did straight away. on this computer i'm on now i did an upgrade didn't work the drivers i couldn't get a, my ethernet driver couldn't it wasn't work. drivers thing it just said update failed update oh failed, right okay failed and then it well no, i just couldn't get correctly. an ethernet driver so i just wa- i just wiped it and did a fresh install no problem and it was brilliant Mm. And then at the office, it's been trying to update automatically all week. And yep. you get your little messages from Windows 8 yes. saying, notice, you're like, you, new notices, Windows upgrade, you know, Windows 10 upgrade failed, 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 failed. And I thought, oh, I don't know why. Mm. So I just downloaded it and just did a normal upgrade without wiping it because it's my work computer. I didn't want to start yeah. wiping anything. But it worked a treat. Yeah. Yeah. Work treat, no hassles, nothing. First time Great. I've ever done an actual upgrade. Every other operating system, I've wiped off the whole thing and just yes. reinstalled because yeah. uh, drivers... Yeah, it can be uh, a bit of a drama. Uh, Glenn, I suggest you do the no same. Problem. Yeah. Wipe well, it. Well, look, I, as I said last week, I was pretty keen to upgrade my this machine <laughs> I'm on now to, to the Windows 10. But I've just been sitting here waiting for it to tell me I'm allowed. And I've, I've waited all week. I've restarted tonight and it came up and said, you're ready. So that's, oh really? Yeah. That's well, a, yeah. Well, they have been um, phasing them in because you know there's the, the servers are getting whacked. But I had that that already downloaded. Remember last week I had that file with it had about six gig in it. Yeah, so, but they're probably downloading even more. They're isn't probably actually the, the wrong location. If you have a look at that um, hidden one, dollars window BT or something at the start. That's not uh, where the update is supposed to be. If you have a problem with your update, you delete the one under Windows, uh, what is it, Downloads, Software, software Updates and stuff. Software, yep, yep. Delete the Downloads directory, it'll download into there. I did that about four times and then it just worked mm. fine, the next one. Oh, I thought but it might have... the one I didn't touch, I don't know what's in there, but they said um, in all the stuff we were talking about last week and all the websites said you get that hidden directory, Windows, tilde Windows yeah. dot yeah. BT yeah. something and... Apparently, that doesn't seem to have much to do with it at all. So, are we allowed to delete? Because it's taking up hard drive space. What about Windows? You can, um, you delete I was that? reading you can do a disk cleanup, run, just run the Windows oh, built-in okay. disk cleanup and all delete it. Then you can't roll back if anything goes oh, wrong. If you leave fair it enough. in the meantime, you can go back to well, 8.1 without any problem. Well, I'll tell you. I'll I've t- got it all on here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, you roll back? No, no. Well, just okay. Windows 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've yep. got it all here. Yeah, well, look, I... I'm going to uh, roll back. I'm not going back to Windows 8. Are you kidding me? Remember how many floppies we used to use to install a I new know, Windows? look at that. Now it's just shrinkage. No now, more yeah. floppies, just shrinkage. That is a bit cold. Now, I, I'll tell you something for nothing. I just went and had a look at the Windows tilde BT directory. Now, remember last week, it was 6 gig or so, but tonight it's empty, or oh. virtually empty. So it must have all transferred over to what... That folder Jace was saying. So Mine's must still have... full. It's got 3.8 gigs in that Windows BT one. In yours? Yeah. Well, let me have a look. I'll just do a, pro- I'll do a thing on mine. Mine's got 408K. Software distribution, I've got only 56 meg. That's uh, under the Windows, isn't it? Software distribution. Windows software distribution download. That's the one that you have to delete the download folder if it doesn't work and then try again with the force update and then try again and try again and eventually it worked. First time I think it downloaded about three gigs in there and tried to apply the update, didn't work. So I retried it and downloaded about two gigs and didn't work. And then the next time I tried it, downloaded about mm. five and a half gigs. Now, it's if you want... Rating system in that one. Well, my, mine's got bloody... Uh... You know, the dollar sign Windows tilde WS, 10 gigs. What's going on there? <laughs> I know you've downloaded it twice. <laughs> I know, I think I probably did. Microsoft will be after you, you, you uh, bandwidth waster. Yeah. <laughs> you the, bandwidth all. The internet police will come <laughs> yes. and get me. Conroy will be knocking on my door. Curry, <laughs> Murray. Now, um, look, apparently you can roll it back to Windows 8 if you don't like 10, but I think you've only got a month to do it. Is that oh, right? Who no. wants to do I that? I think you can just type in the start menu. I've got the disc here anyway. I've got, I've got it all on a CD, so it's all right. Yeah, if you want it on CD, you like to do a fresh install, you can. There's a You go through to the Microsoft site, Windows 10 page. There's a little uh, program, little file that you uh, download and run, and then it'll ask you what version of Windows 10 you want to 
an ISO or a USB of it. It'll make a bootable USB. So that's um that's a pretty good little tool. But I, I did it too. Uh, I did. I put them all on CD. I got some ISOs. And yeah, uh, well, my friends couldn't do the update, but he just downloaded the built the tool and mm. created a, a bootable um, USB drive and installed it fresh from there. No problem. Yeah, I got. I did the. I did the Pro, the Home, the 3264 bit, and then there was also a selection, an option where you could do the Pro or Home, uh, 32 and 64. And I went, yeah, hey, okay, I'll do that one. And I went to write what that. Did you do 64 or 32? I did both. 60. No, no, which one? Final install 64, of course. Yeah, 64 yeah. will be the. Okay, yeah. yeah. But just in case I go to someone, you know, dump and they've only got 32 bit. So, um, yeah, so I went the, the ISO, the 32 bit and 64 bit ISO was like 6 gig. Couldn't put it to a DVD, could I? So, um, no, just a little, little tip for, for uneducated users. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so look, I'll, I'll be doing Windows 10 this week on this machine. But look, I did look up to see if I could get the Aero in GUI, in Windows 10. I miss. I, I think I'm going to miss the the, the colourful U- GUI. I like it. Uh, Man, like, easy, like, easy to so see stuff. What, you know, the the, the very what? first thing I do once I install Windows is disable all that crap. Oh, I like it. Can't stand it. <laughs> so it slows shit right, down. Right, right. It's buggy. It gets in the way of stuff. It doesn't let you do things properly. It's the worst thing. It's seriously. More oh, error it, crap. It's so it's such a memory hog. Mm, and it is. Bad memory leaks. It kills which, the performance this, even on top end system. For? Which one's this for? The the the, 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 the tiles. It's just shocking. No, the aero, the old glass aero look of Windows 8. You know the the colourful. That's probably why your audio uh, keeps uh, cutting out. How do you get that off? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I look for it. I want to get it on. Get the basic mood. I want to get it on. I don't know how to get it on. But so uh, just a theme, just a play a new theme. Is that what Aero you do? Aero theme, classic theme. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Which one's Aero? Aero is the one where you get transparent. Um, oh, I don't like that. I always lose my windows. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, mm. it's crap. And it uses up your GPU too much. Yeah, yeah so look, I think Windows 10 is, is going to be successful. Yeah, yeah uh, no Let's problem be ubiquitous across Xbox and desktop and laptop and Surface. Yeah, just and ex- ex- Windows 10 Mobile, same app should work on everything. Let's expand on that a bit more, seeing that you you brought that up. So, what do you mean by uh, the Xbox and the, uh, across Xbox and whatever? Does that we're mean? all going to run the same core operating system. So, does that mean I can play? I've got Minecraft on the Xbox. Does that mean I can then put that DVD into a computer and play it on the computer? What it means oh. is there will be a version for the computer. If depends on, it's up to the developer really. They can make a cross-platform thing. Like you know how if you buy a uh, iPhone app and it's got built-in um, universal binary that will work if you install the same app onto your iPad. Right. You just get the iPad version of the screen, which you know maybe on the iPhone you just get one view for your Twitter. But on the iPad in landscape mode, you get a list of your options down the left-hand side and split screen things. Like if you're reading email on your iPhone, you get one screen that lists all of your inbox and you click on which folder you want and then it wipes that screen. You get another screen that has your email, whereas Mm -hmm. on the iPad, you have a list of all your inboxes down the side and there's more real estate so they can put other stuff. Yes. Just the one binary. So they can technically do that kind of thing with... um, developers can with windows 10 so you can write an app and you can have a version of it for each platform and it just resizes and rearranges itself depending on what it's on but they could also do what some iphone developers do here's the iphone version you pay four dollars for that here's the ipad version you pay another four dollars for that yeah even they could just make it the one thing if they really wanted to depends on how greedy they are Mm. well i suppose you know i'd I'd probably why not charge but the other thing is with their continuum which is the point of it is you you play it on your xbox and then it saves the game when you quit you pick your surface and you start continue the same game with your friends from when you left off right so that means then, say, take Minecraft, for, ex- for instance, because yep. you've got different what, actual versions from the Xbox to the iPad to the, to the computer. They're not using the same game database or whatever you want to call it, are they? They different- will because what a lot of people will do is buy the Minecraft Realms server, which means that's where your, your, uh, all your game and everything rely- lies on the um, Mojang servers. Yes. Over in Sweden or Microsoft ones now, probably in Azure Cloud or whatever. And if you log on to it with your desktop, they've released a Windows 10 specific version, which is in C++ based on the Pocket Mobile version. 
but right. they're all getting up to the same features. You just can't do plugins and stuff like you can with the Java one. Mm. Um, then you play your game with your friends on there. Then you download it for your mobile device. And if they're nice, they might say, since you've already got it on the desktop, we give it to you free on your mobile, which is what they're doing currently. If you've got a Minecraft <laughs> account, it's a Java one. Your new Windows 10 one is going to be free because you've already paid for it. You're not going right. to have to buy the Windows 10 version, which is optimized for Windows 10. And yeah. then you just you get your mobile device, say your iPad or your Android or your Surface or whatever, and you log on to exactly the same Realm server and play with the same friends that you did on your desktop or your Xbox. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, okay, I see how that's going to work. Well, that's going to be good. That is good. Mm. So uh, that's pretty much like Apple's a bit like that now, isn't it, that you can pick things up on different devices and... And go for it. Yep. Oh, we can watch the cricket while we're streaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who's in? <laughs> can we? Yeah, if you watch the If lounge. you watch the stream. <laughs> Cricket's in the lounge. <laughs> oh, has Will got the cricket on? Mm. Maybe. What's the score? <laughs> uh, just about the bat. He's had enough of Luke talking about windows. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, okay, well, let's um, move on to some news of the week, hey? I think he's helping out PA. <laughs> oh, what's PA doing? PA couldn't watch Oops. the us stream as well as the cricket at the same time. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, look, where do we start? Look, well, I'll, I'll kick one off then. I've got a I've got a Mac story. Oh dear. Yeah. Now this one here is uh, the new worm that can kill your MacBook. Never. Okay, I'll close off that story from my windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Every week it happens, right? <laughs> we must have the same taste in stories. I know, right? So, what bag, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> no, you wait till you hear this one. Security researchers have created them a... for Android anyway, so don't worry. Have created a worm. I don't know what. Well, security researchers have created what? have created Sorry. a worm. So that, this obviously doesn't mean that's out in the wild yet, but it's uh, potentially that could happen. So specifically for OS X, OS X, and it has the potential to infect every Apple computer, and it's been called the Thunderstrike Two. That's right. Now, look, I've got a little picture here. Well, you want to know the score? Yeah. One for four. Is, Told you. Is England uh, playing? I earlier, all out for Jack, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Tell me England's batting. <laughs> no. Who's no. out? Not Warner. Have a guess. You, it'll be, uh, what's his name? Not Warner. Smithy. <laughs> Stream stop for me. No. All right. Anyway, that's um. No, no one's going to care because by the time it, by the time everyone's listening, it'll be all over. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, right. it'll be Friday. It'll be all over. Now, um, this, okay. Getting back to this worm. The worm exploits a vulnerability in OS X and can even affect machines not connected to the internet. Once installed, Thunderstrike Two is virtually undetectable, and there's no way to remove it. These mm. security researchers are expected to unveil their method of hacking this Thursday at a Black Hat conference in LA. Oh, no, in El Las Vegas, sorry. It's life on infected Thunderbolt peripherals. So it, it, so what it can do is they infect a Thunderbolt peripheral, and after being connected to the Apple machine, Thunderstrike 2 uses a vulnerability to write itself onto the computer's firmware. At this point, the worm exists below the area used by traditional worms, and it's embedded into the computer's BIOS rather than the operating system. The worm is able to copy itself onto other peripherals used by the infected machine, so it can easily be transmitted to other computers. Thunderstrike 2 can usually write itself into the computer's BIOS immediately, but in Ooh. several instances, it must wait until the machine is restarted. Well, I'll give you that graphic again. Uh, the, the makers of the worm, believe, the worm believe it opens up an entirely new method of hacking, and one that manufacturers and consumers aren't prepared for. Uh, hackers, for example, could distribute infected devices using eBay stores and gain access quickly to thousands of machines. So according to a blog post, one of the researchers, by one of the researchers, the issue was partially fixed by Apple last month. However, OS X is still vulnerable to the hack, and Apple is working with the researchers to fix this issue. So that's pretty nasty. Like it's, oh, it turns out my story is a different one about Apple. So, oh, we can get that Excellent. tab back. So you, so, so I don't know. Do you understand all that? I reckon it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? That yep. exists. I mean, it's interesting because of the way the Apple operating system is built, which inherently is on a secure Unix background, effectively much the same as Linux is. That's PBS. really, yeah. That's really the only way they can get in there. They can't. It doesn't spread like a traditional um, Windows virus will. But it's actually pretty smart. They've, they've found that, you know, there's enough room, given that the BIOS chips, I don't know how big they are these days, they used to only be like 16K or something. 
So given you know they found enough room on there that they can actually do that, that's pretty impressive. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. But uh, but moving <coughs> but moving on to a story that's related. I'll do this now. I'll just hog the first two stories. But moving on to the first, the, the one that's just related. steal the limelight. Why don't you? Yes. Uh, the, Let's make it up for when he wasn't here. See. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Now through this this week, I went. I had to go to a, a customer's uh, business because. They opened one of those Australia Post emails, didn't they? <laughs> oh my God! We've, yes, we've got your. Um, uh, oh, was this last week? It was last Thursday. For, I don't know when it was. I don't Did know. They anyway. get a lovely red screen. But anyway, no, they had the the crypto locker virus, didn't they? So anyway, but what made me think of it was th- there's a a Windows 10 scam that's going around through the email. And it's telling you, hey, don't wait for the you know the upgrade if you don't have it already. Click this link here and get it straight away. <laughs> so what do you do? You click the link there, and all of a sudden, encryption city. <laughs> it's dun, just dun, dun. encryptions galore. And uh, yeah, and then you're asked to pay whatever it is, you know, two thousand ten, two thousand dollars. So Cisco security researchers are warning Please, against opening email attachments purporting to be from the the. Uh, from Microsoft, the ransomware malware which encrypts files until a ransom is paid is being sent as part of an email spam scam campaign. It's a um, website made by um, by researchers that can uh, reverse. They've, they've reverse engineered crypto locker. So if you go to the website, you can upload a small encrypted file, say a readme.txt or something you don't care about, the contents of them finding out, which they don't care about. You upload the encrypted file, they'll give you a key that you can download and unencrypt your computer with. But let me give you an update to that, <gasps> because that was the decryptolocker.com, and for f- some stupid reason, because that's what I went straight, the first thing I went to was the decryptolocker for this guy. Yep. Uh, so it's just decommissioned. We don't, oh, no. we don't think the crypto lockers are a problem anymore. So, <laughs> oh, well done. So, how is that? But like, I'm, I'm reading more into it. I think what it was happening was there's different strains of the crypto locker virus. There is, yeah. A lot of people don't realise. They go, oh, I've got the antivirus. I don't have to care. What they do is they make the virus polymorphic, which means it rewrites its code, changes sections around, switches <laughs> things around, makes it look different. So, when it, all, all the. Uh, all the antivirus software does is a bunch of people will get a copy of the virus, then they'll create what they call a fingerprint, which says these particular things happen in these particular areas, which makes it look like this virus. Now, if they make it polymorphic, which means the virus mutates itself, basically, kind of like you know viruses and real-life viruses and things mutate themselves, then when the antivirus software sees it, it goes, okay, I'm looking for this particular signature, which means this should be here, this should be here, this what? should be here. That's not there, so therefore it lets it through. And then they have to capture the new one and then Sweet. make another one. The other thing they can do is what they call heuristics, which means they try and guess something that's behaving like a virus. It's right mm. into certain files that uh, the computer thinks it shouldn't, but then it annoys people because they keep on getting things, oh, you downloaded blah de blah and we think this is probably a virus, you probably shouldn't run it. You know, it's a legitimate thing, so you have to balance between the two. Do you get super secure and block people from doing too much, in which case it annoys them because it blocks things that are not actually a virus, or do you let them through and then potentially they get hacked so it's a bit of a balancing thing yeah because that's why you get, you get that malware bites you run that and you get to the heuristic analysis and you it'll flip through and it'll, it'll find all these um potentially unwanted programs you get rid of them anyway but that, yep. yeah they're, they're probably okay but they're just they, they too many of those programs go through your internet cookies file and go oh there's cookies on here your computer is vulnerable i sure. just killed 500 potentially harmful things on your computer yes. and you go, it's a cookie, just yeah. settle down, son. Yeah, calm down. Calm I mean, down. One of the first viruses that I can remember that did that was that, uh, was it the Numidia or whatever it was virus back in about 2000? Admin backwards, yeah. Yeah, the backwards admin. Nimda. Yeah, it, it was the same sort of thing. It um, it would embed itself into, like, even into the MBR, like it was impossible to get rid of. Mm. Yeah, look, some of them are pretty bad. But yeah, but anyway, uh, but the, th- the thing with the crypto locker is that it'll be detected, it'll be get picked up by your anti malware and it'll or anti virus will be it'll get rid of relatively easy. But it's too late. It's uh, it's after you. It's done the damage. This one I had the other week. It doesn't just infect the computer that you're sitting at. He was connected to a network, so it infected every computer that that 
that his computer had access to. So any yep. map drive, uh, anything that he had on access local to. network, yeah. Yeah, it, on that, on, he had access to on that network, his computer. It encrypted all the data and fo- photos and all that sort of stuff. Luckily, I had him uh, with a crash plan backup. So we just pulled some stuff back down. Bob's your uncle. Done. All right. Um, let's Update cricket score three for ten. <laughs> Jeez, they're going down fast. <laughs> they are. They're going down like flies. So that's disgraceful, isn't it? That is that's disgraceful. It is. I'll tell you what it is. As it's a side, this is this week in cricket. Um, <laughs> Michael Clark is not a leader. No. Uh, everyone knows that. No. He turns up. The, he he doesn't travel on the team bus. Oh. He turns up by himself there in his Bentley or whatever he's driving this week. Oh. Um, he doesn't go out with them at night. Uh, to celebrate or to to talk things over, or yeah, he, right. he leaves the ground on his own. He gets there on his own. He doesn't associate with them when they're not playing cricket. He is not a team guy. This guy cares about no one else but himself. Well, well and he should be th- dropped, and his contract should be cancelled. I think I read a statistic back. the other day saying that since he's been captain, they haven't won a a test. No, he, well, they haven't won a, a, like a series. They haven't won an Ashes test in England since he's been captain. Yeah, mm. an Ashes test, yeah. But you wouldn't mind it so much if they sort of, you know, just lost or whatever, but three yeah. for ten's a bit poor. And the only reason they've, lo- they've won in Australia while he's captain is because they've got the crowds behind him. Yeah, well, now, in England, you've got the English crowds to contend with, and that's when good captaincy comes to the fore because you've got to get rally your team. And if you're turning up there in your Bentley mm. with your... With your wife, with a bloody hardly anything on, mm. right? Going out at night, you know. Just he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about his team. He really yeah. doesn't. He should be dropped. Why is he captain? Yeah, I, well, who knows? Brad Hatt should be captain. Bring him back. Yeah, he's got. He was unceremoniously uh, dumped, wasn't he? Yeah, really? He had family problems. Oh, okay. Then see you later. Yeah, he dumped. This one test, you miss them all. Great. What's, thanks. What's, thanks for your understanding. What's Buff doing? Is he just doesn't care either? Is he at the mercy of Marsh and all those yeah, others? Pretty much. Yeah. He's got his, his, he puts across his point of view, but the final decision's the selectors. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Bring right. Steve War back. Yeah, where is the War Brothers? Bring him back. Bring back, yeah. back Warney. He's... Yeah, Warney <laughs> can still play. Play. He'd, get, he'd bowl him out. No <laughs> yeah, he'd still, he still bloody tweaks it. All right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, this week in cricket over. Three for ten. Three for ten. We're gone. It's okay. Going back to this week in Apple Sucks. The, the cricket will be finished by the time the podcast will, so it's fine. Right, it'll be all out by the time we're done. Here we go. They're going out at stumps and. Uh... Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's drag Will right. away from it and and ask him for what's happened this week. Me, um, well, I was just look. I was actually just reading the list of stuff for the new um, Windows Ten rollout update that they've already released. The, um, the okay. installations they've got, they've got about 14, 15 million, they say, at this stage? Yes, well, it was 14 million yesterday that I saw, I don't know, so, but it's, they're forced up, they're forced installs, it's not like people went and bought 14 million copies of Windows. No, that's right. <laughs> is, that, is that all they've done, 14 that's, that, million? That's what Apple does. Yeah, well. Have, have they only done 14? I can tell you what, it wasn't the Australian oh, government who bought that many copies of anything. <laughs> no, well, apparently I heard it on the grapevine today. Uh, this is by no means verified anywhere, but um, I heard that the government spends fourteen million a year just to keep XP alive. That's yeah, my story. That yes. What? That's yeah. my story. Oh, okay, Jace, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Australian federal government departments are paying Microsoft fourteen point four million dollars to continue to support their use of outdated Windows operating systems for another year because the software giant no longer officially provides security updates for support for them. The Department of Finance recently signed off on a two one-year contracts for ongoing custom support for Windows XP and Windows Server 2003 yeah. to service the Departments of Defense, <laughs> Human oh, Services, yeah, Immigration, yeah. and Border Protection. Go, yeah. Australia, border! The Department of Defense, and, Border Protection, aren't they supposed to be probably one of the most secure government agencies around? You th- and they've got so. Windows XP? <laughs> yeah, Santa and Server You might as well just leave the door open and the key in the ignition. Yeah. And the ATO. <laughs> Microsoft discontinued support for Windows XP in April last year and for Windows Server 2003 last month, meaning it will no longer provide users with security updates or support. Organisations can buy continued support, though it comes at a cost. Microsoft is reportedly doubling the annual fee for Windows Server 2003 support each year. 
The yeah. spokesman for the Department of Finance said the decision to remain on the legacy operating systems had been a cost-effective whole-of-government procurement. Oh, it was cheaper to stay on XP crap. and pay $14.4 million than upgrade them to win. For free. How is it cheaper? <laughs> Aren't they? Aren't this they is what I don't like about government. You know, it's waste you, your money. You know why they're still using XP? Because all their websites still run on IE6. No, they don't. Because they, they've they also think to, that uh, dial-up is awesome. <laughs> and right. digital watches are a neat idea. Actually, a, a lot of it is because if, you, if you've been to Centrelink or you've been to um, Medic, Medicare or a lot of those sort of places, a lot of them still use the dumb terminals. And they're embedded with XP. So uh, in a lot of the cases, it's not just simply a matter of installing a new operating system. It's, it's actually like a whole rollout cost. Server in, they've got to replace the whole terminal. Yeah. Oh, look, you can imagine, it's, it's, you know, you upgrade an operating system, you can but imagine it's a big thing. Slowly. It'll be done by end of the year. Well, actually, government, okay. Oh, you're next. kidding well, me. That means these computers are also well, that right. old is exactly. the problem right. because you, most companies know. like the ones I've supported have, have a uh, upgrade every three years because the warranty on the actual computer runs out. Yes. But you know what I reckon So is? these computers are all out of warranty and running Windows XP and should have been replaced themselves a long time ago. But I reckon what it is is, is the software was written so long ago. And so, okay, so it was written in the XP days. So maybe you're talking about, um, say, languages or, or whatever that may have been predated XP. So all these things, these scripts or services or programs for, the say, Centrelink, they're all written back so long ago that there's probably no one alive today that can go back in yeah. like, from scratch. Why not run them as it? virtual things like Hyper-V machines or something like that? It's Even the government. They've only just figured out how to use XP. I hey, don't forget. There's a lot of it's data. Uh, previous government, it, 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 with its all this technology now, has put the NBN on the back of a coaster. So this is what we're dealing with in governments. <laughs> and yeah. what, what was, it? was it? But didn't, didn't the White House, um, when the White House, when Barmet, Obama took over, went from running Windows 95 or something. All those oh, systems were surprised. running. Yeah, yeah the, the, what, the president's office running Windows 95. Yeah, it was something like, something really obscure. They're all running like this really arcane operating system and really ancient systems on every single computer inside the White House. And he went, um, hello. <laughs> yeah, he got them upgraded. What was that what worm that used to come on the XP? As soon as you hooked it to the internet, you get it within about 20 seconds. Yeah, Nim, 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 Nimbia or whatever it is. Yeah, I forget the name. Yeah. Of it. That, was, that was terrible. That but, was the one. If you weren't, yeah, the, as, you're trying, as you're downloading and installing your virus scanner, you're getting this bloody worm. Yeah, you had to um, get the scanner onto it. I reckon, I reckon the virus makers were the ones bloody um, sending out the bots and the worms and the malware so people would go and buy their software. No one buys it. You can't hear your wall lock your mic's muted. Um, nobody buy it. No, well, actually, that's not true. A lot of people bought it anyway. Remember back in the days of VET? Like, yeah. you know, that was... Four for 15. It was VET versus um, VET, McAfee, and Norton. Yeah. Oh, Norton, God. Everyone used to buy Norton. Yeah, and, right. uh, They still do. Norton, yeah, not McAfee. And they still do. It's crazy. It, Norton, it wouldn't matter if you had a supercomputer from one of the universities. You put that on there, and it's as slow as a dog. <laughs> And you know the thing about Norton is it would actually it would it would watermark all its files. So if you installed Norton, ran a virus scan, uninstalled Norton, and then installed something else, it would actually tell you that every single every single file is infected because Norton has actually gone through and watermarked every file. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. I, look, I, I've always suspected well, like, I think that the virus, be. the virus, uh, uh, what you call it, people, the people that sort of stop the viruses or scan for the virus. I always suspected that they were the ones actually releasing them as well. Can't hear you, Warlock. I think your mic's exploded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 a bit weird. Like, yeah, that, that's a good that's a good question in the chat. I just put, are you mute, Warlock? No. Are you mute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's he, is this a text from him? No, is is it, 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 he's just said it's turned on and plugged in. Yeah, it might be turned on and plugged in, but it ain't bloody working. <laughs> can't, can't hear nothing. Oh, Why has got you? Blame Skype. We'll give him five seconds. We'll... <laughs> We'll see. Oh, oh wow! Oh. They didn't get out. Someone didn't. Someone didn't get out. That's the surprise. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So let's uh, let's. Where am? Where are we with? Where, where's my other show notes? Okay, Will. Uh, uh, Eric, did you bring any stories, or are you just did. flying through? Okay, yes, please. <coughs> I've been announced today. There you go. Launch of a new service that will allow large companies to easily incorporate Mac computers 
into their pre-existing corporate infrastructure. So they're rolling out a service just to install Macs in business. The service to being deployed by IBM's mobile first managed mobility services unit will be aimed at companies around the world and not just based in the United States. That's interesting. Mm. Everything, everyone's focusing on Macs for business. Well, IBM just announced that 380,000 workers are going to be on MacBooks. They're going to yeah. leave, go with they're the rolling out there. They're rolling out there. They're rolling out there. The IBM. <laughs> well, they have to put their, give their own staff Macs if they're the ones that are actually going to be installing the Macs. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm. What about they, they, all, their stuff, all their hardware went to Lenovo, who's making the old IBM stuff, and now they're not even going to get that. They're just going to go. No, well, Mac. IBM itself, as a company, do not own any hardware subsidiaries anymore. Mm. It's all been sold to Lenovo. The ThinkBooks, which is what Glenn got, and oh, the yeah, servers, yeah. They're yeah. All, which I bought at a Lenovo server a couple of weeks ago. Look, yeah. I like the Lenovo little yogas that I've bought. They're great. Yeah, they're, well, my servers are running like a dream. Yeah, yeah, they're good little things. Have on it yet, Glenn? Yes, that's the first thing that went was the uh, was the laptop. Yeah, works and, really well. Uh, well, that's the thing that I think is just a little bit, you know, like it all loads up and you think it's finished loading. Yeah, okay, still, let's no. go. and then you go and do something. And although you can still do stuff, you still get the circle. And no. oh, I yeah, don't know. It takes a while. It takes a while. It's running stuff in the background. You can turn that stuff off. You go to settings, privacy. Yeah, and turn all that off. Yeah, that's one of the main things you want to do when you get Windows 10. Is uh, Microsoft has turned your computer into a torrent machine for its patches and updates. So as soon as you install Windows 10 on it, it enables other people to be able to download the patches distributed from you instead of the Microsoft servers to take load off them. Mm. Disable that straight away. I'm not sharing my bandwidth with anyone, particularly no, if you've got a limited quota off. or limited upstream. Yeah, the um. What you call it? Uh, what was the other one? They um, and I think that slows it down as well. Oh, that's right. When you're installing it, there's an option for express settings or customize. Yeah. And custom. customize is on the far left in little tiny little print. <laughs> yes. You can't even see it. Yes. But express settings is really big. So oh, yeah, I'll press that. <laughs> yes. And uh, today I did. I didn't do. I did express settings on the computer I'm on now. Then I went back and turned everything off. But mm-hmm. today at work, I thought, oh, here we go. There it. Oh, there it is. Get my magnifying glass out. Yep, customize. Bang. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, know, you something. Everything off. Well, I'll tell you, uh, with the, a good thing I liked about the Lenovo, just seeing Lenovo's praises for a sec, is uh, when you go to their driver download page, right? So I went there, found some Windows 10 drivers. You know, you go to your Acer or your um, Asus and all that, and you go, oh, here we go. I've got to download drivers this laptop. Yeah, okay, LAN driver, download. You know, yep. it's, it's Intel chipset, download. And yep. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dell's got a similar thing. Lenovo the site, you just, you just go, ones you want to get. You go click, 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 like download. in a shopping cart, check cart, download, and it downloads the whole lot. How easy it's a bit that? like Nine Night then. Nine no, Nights? No. You ever <laughs> used Nine Night? No, do tell. What? No. You haven't heard of that one? No, tell me. You what's go to NineNight.com and you select a bunch of applications, it's freeware, and um, you just click on all the ones you want, and it creates your personalized zip file of all these free applications. So it's got iTunes, VLC, uh, Winamp, Audacity, oh. Spotify, Media Monkey, QuickTime, Skype, Thunderbird, Trillion, Chrome, Opera, uh, Security Essentials, Vast, AVG or whatever. You just click a bunch of the ones you want, yep. hit Get Installer, it'll package those all into one installer and you just download that. So that'll go away and get the current yep. ver- Oh. Give me some of that loving. N-I-N-I-T-E dot com, Ninite. Oh, I'm into that. I'm getting some of that It stuff. does uh, updates and everything for you as well. Oh, that's great. And look, the only good thing about, as we we're talking about just before that Windows 10 land, or that sharing of the updates, is I think you can share it, so you can turn off so it doesn't share to the net. What? But you no, it shares on your LAN. Yes. But, and I don't know if that actually Serious? works or not yet because I haven't gone that far. But um, if it shares on the LAN, like how good is that? Like, yeah, it would be great, yeah. Because yeah, you have the same problem when you get iOS, you get an update, you have to download a new version for this computer, new version for that laptop, for this phone, and yeah. then even if you've got 10 MacBooks, you've got to download the same update 10 times. So, I think, uh, I don't know, I think you can download it to your machine. Can't you go download... Well, you could download it and then put it onto a disk or a zip file or a... USB and then install it on all the others, but this one just distributes it through yeah. your LAN, which is much easier. It always easier. gives you the uh, the updated version too. Yeah, mm. I'm I'm getting some of that. Nine nights. That's that sounds. That's, <laughs> that sounds five, five for twenty one, by the way. 
Uh, what? What? <laughs> no. Hilarious, yep. right? Yeah. The, yeah, I tell you, him. they are going to be all out by, by the end of the show. Well, I said, I said <laughs> earlier, I reckon 150, but I was thinking, I was going to say 84. But I thought, no, I'll be generous. I'll put 150. <laughs> but I think I'll be close to 84. Dead set. <laughs> Are they trying to get out just so that so everyone just goes? This is bull. no. They're, Clarky's told them get out so we can all go home because I don't want to deal with you. Yeah, ever, probably. You know, I've got better things to do, like collect my contract money for not doing anything. He's got to he's got to alfoil the aerial on his Bentley. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Before he goes through the washing machine, the, the uh, car wash. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Will what have you catch. got any, what a catch? You got oh, any what a catch! Stories. <laughs> uh, yeah, got got a few here. Um, one of my favourite ones at the moment. Facebook, as we know, everyone loves Facebook. Um, they've got this thing that they've been doing for, for a few years. Um, they're slowly starting to roll it out. They, they do their internet.org, which the concept is that everyone in the world is going to have the internet. So there's a lot of places where um, it's impossible, basically, to put up a cell tower or to have even satellite reception in some places. So Facebook has come up with a solution. They built a solar-powered drone, which, you know, not nothing unusual there, except it has the wingspan of a 737. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> nice. It's just going to stay out there forever going around in circles. Basically, yeah, the entire wing surface is solar panels. Um, so what happens at night time? Has, it falls out of the sky. <laughs> it basically has a you know, lithium tank under the panels and four really ultra-efficient engines. And it can also glide if they've got a strong enough headwind. It can actually glide into the headwind. Um, and it basically it can effectively contains a um, satellite, something that talks to satellite, like, you know, send and receive to mm. a communication, and uh, Wi-Fi so people can connect to it. Now, well, um, so talking about drones... Because... It's better than loons, right? Yeah. Mm. But that's a, that's a big wingspan, isn't it? That's yep. huge. Yeah. That's yeah. That's huge. So look, I'm yeah. assuming it's got enough juice to stay in the air at night. Yeah, it'll 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 stay up for ninety days, um, even without sun. Mm. Ninety it'll, days. Yeah. Another wicket. Another between, wicket. Si- between yeah, another wicket. Between sixty and ninety thousand feet. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's pretty impressive, and basically any it. Actually uses actually I'm just reading a bit more about it. It actually uses a 3G wireless signal. So basically, anybody who's got a mobile phone will be able to access it. Yeah, nice. Well, oh, well good for them. Good on you, Marco. And they're using a laser. Um, I don't know if you remember back in the day when unmanned subs become a thing. They used to use like a blue laser that would communicate or a green laser actually that would communicate through um, through the water a fair distance, even through murky water, so the subs could communicate with the, the back to base. We're doing a similar sort of thing with these. Um, they're using um, green lasers, I think they are, that can tra- that can relay tens of gigabytes per second um, and any drone that's basically in line of sight. So you imagine these things are up 90,000 feet and there's drones spaced every, you know, whatever the curvature of Earth is. That's a long way up. 5Ks or whatever the curvature of the Earth is. So these drones can actually communicate with each other via lasers until one of them gets a hard link back and can actually dump the data. Yeah. How, is, is that right? 90,000 feet? That's a long way up. Between 60 and 90,000 feet, yeah. Holy. How, how high does a normal plane go? Well, they're, above, they're above that, yeah. They're, they've got to be above the traffic. And wow. Sometimes I'm lucky to get Wi-Fi down the backyard. I, know. <laughs> yes. I hate it when you, if you're on Vodafone, you really had it then, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I hate when you've got no Wi-Fi in the can. You just get a pen <laughs> It's what you call a black spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brown out. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, talking to drones over in the US, there's a uh, Mr. Meredith, his name is. He, he shot a drone with a shotgun. He, uh, he... I would have too. He probably got the pizza yeah, wrong. That was the government one. <laughs> right, I ordered out, meat out, lovers. On, <laughs> bang. Bang. On delivery. Yeah, so but so this guy he fired three shots at the drone before it crashed into the woods near his house. Excellent. That's so funny. He said his daughters came in from the back garden to tell their father that they had spotted a drone flying overhead. Now, Mr. Meredith explained that the drone was hovering above his neighbourhood when it moved over his property. He shot it down, as you, as you probably would do. Um, 
three shots from his Benelli shot barrel shotgun took the craft out of the sky. He says, I went to my safe. Sure. Retrieve my yeah. shotgun. <laughs> under, which means I reached for under the lounge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I just reached from the, behind the right down the back of my back. Uh, so I went to my safe, retrieved my shotgun, went out the back. I felt that I was well within my rights as an American citizen to defend my property. He explained yep. that he was concerned that the drone was invading <clears throat> his privacy and that his daughters and that it was not invading his daughters. Oh, jeez. And, and That's the different sort of drone. And his privacy. <laughs> That's the boyfriend's name. <laughs> and uh, the daughter that it was not the first time a drone had been sighted in that area. Poor girls. And it's, for, well, it's the last now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four men, including the owner of the drone, uh, uh, later confronted Mr. Meredith outside his house. They were pretty upset. There were some words exchanged and they started towards me. At that point, Mr. Meredith explained that he felt he had the right to defend himself and he made the men aware he was armed. So he went to his safe again. My gun was holstered on my belt and it never yeah. came out. He walked around with a holstered belt. Yes. That's what people do, especially when the gun was in your safe. That's right. That's right. I never brandished the gun, never pulled it out or waved around anything like that. Uh, police arrested Mr. Meredith and charged him with offences relating to the discharge of a firearm. He had, an, he had offensive discharge, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah defensive discharge. Yeah, oh, a bit dear. puffy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that uh, I don't think that's right. You can have he's, a drone. He's not the first. He won't be the last. People, no, right. people are sick of it already. Yeah, well, whether or not, people, whether or not uh, it's right or wrong, uh, people are going to do it. Yeah. They don't like it. It's an invasion of privacy. I don't want anyone hovering above me. I've got three girls that live here. That's right. Three daughters. You don't know what's going on. Why? What, yeah. So, like, I mean, what, what sort of right? Why do these guys? Why do people have a right to fly drones wherever they like? You know, what I reckon there should be a law. I don't know. In, I don't know if there is one already. There should be a law that states that a certain amount of space above your home is classified private airspace that no one can fly into. There is, but it's That's not large. Nice. There is, but it's not so a lot. For example, I don't. I don't, well, I, well, I don't know what it is, but it's only, it's so like in my place, I reckon it should be um, sixty thousand feet. A kilometer <laughs> above my my roof space, they're not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's. It's only like thirty meters or something. You only own. You only own something like thirty meters up and ten meters down. Mm. Look, I've just just just, uh, just uh, in, interrupting news. I've just had a text saying that the lowest ever test score by Australia is thirty six versus England in nineteen oh two. Oh, well, we're going to get that. <laughs> we might be onto that. All right. Well, maybe that's what he's going for. He's going for the record. So he at least Clarky can say, well, got, a got a record. Record. Yeah. That'll be a while before that's broken. It's over 100 years since the last one was broken. Yeah. Even before. Yeah, I, heard, so, I heard recently uh, that a uh, real estate agent was doing drone photos of homes that were for sale. Mm. And they took a uh, photo of this house through the backyard and over the top of the house, put it out, uh, put it, printed out a great big sign of it and stuck it out the front of the real estate agency. And you could see the next door neighbor lady doing a bit of nude sunbathing. And uh, oh, word got yeah. back to her. She got in there and was ripping shreds off them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Likely story. I reckon she next day she went right. They're going to come around again. I want to make sure I've got less on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure you let me know when you're coming. Yes, but <laughs> that's look, what yeah. they said. <laughs> look, well, I don't. I don't know if that's a good thing. Like, I'd be also, I'm also concerned about. So the drone hits a. I don't know. A, a, a bloody power line. Something like. Nah. Well, look. No one here. Dislike we all like technology, but there comes a point where you think, no, I'm not going to ring up Pizza Hut to get their drone deliver a pizza. Yeah, you know, it's only no, I'd, I'd do that. Yeah, <laughs> you're too late. You're too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's bad enough their GPS track now. Have you seen that? The latest Domino, yeah. they order a pizza and they wear GPS trackers now. So you can track your pizza guy. Well, you, that's what they say. say. And I'll tell you what, if he's running late, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run him down. They say that's what it's for, but it's actually to protect the pizza guys because there's been a hell of a lot of them get knocked over in the last. Because they're always late. Now you know where they are. Now you know where they are, so you can. Where you've been? You told me forty minutes. You've been an hour and a half. Order yeah, a so. pizza you don't want, ask for change for a $50 note, and then Wrong. go track him and then meet him down the road there when he's near a dark alley. So, well, that's what people are doing, though. Mm. That's what it's actually worse because now everyone knows where the pizza guy is. 
They can have a tracking guy for the pizza that only the Pizza Hut people can see, but giving it us access, like, okay, he's at that place, let's go and get him. Give an estimate like he'll be there in five minutes or two minutes or something, but don't have a spot on which yeah, road. That's, that's another one. That's dangerous. I reckon that's more dangerous. Six, Six for 29. Woo. Okay, Eric, tell us about your massive 43-acre <laughs> development site in North San Jose. Um, Apple purchases massive 43-acre development site. Well, good on them. Uh, that's, that's what happened story. to their UFO What's building? No, oh, still, that's still there. Shortly after leasing 300 square foot campus in North San Jose, Apple has expanded on its real estate holdings in the area, buying a 43-acre development site for more than $138 million. That's small change with someone with $110 billion in the bank. Oh, yeah, jeez. Uh, the site, which consists of undeveloped land, is approved for up to $2.8 million square feet of office, office space. Oh, Much like Apple's Campus 2 location in Cupertino, uh, how, however, Apple has not submitted plans for the site, well, as yet, I would say. That's probably on its way. Yes. So, so Eric, you know a bit about uh, money and stuff. How much, what bit. kind of interest rate do you think they would get on $10 billion? Well, not much, because the interest rates in America are, are, are very low. They're probably 4%? getting 1%, 1%. No. 1%. 1%. And but still do what your they're account. doing, what, they're, what Apple are doing is that most of their cash is held offshore. And if well, and the, the the rules in America are, uh, if the cash is held offshore, you don't have to pay tax on it. That's why they pay such a low amount of tax. The rules here are different. Doesn't matter where you hold the cash, you're paying tax on it, right? Yep. Mm, yeah. Uh, for corporations over there, it's a little bit different. Uh, so what they do is that in places outside of the states, in the states they're only getting about one percent, but in places outside of the states they're getting more than that. You know, in Europe and Australia or you know Cayman Islands or wherever Ireland or wherever the hell they are. They might be getting between two and three percent, but what they're doing, they're borrowing money to pay their dividends and everything else at something like one and a half percent. But they're getting a return on their cash outside of the states at That's about three percent or four percent. So and even on their loans, winning. they're making money. <laughs> they're making money. But the funny thing is, it get it's they get the government gets a double gets a double punch in the face because. The one and a half percent interest that they're paying on their loans in America is tax deductible, but, <laughs> but the money that the interest that they're earning overseas is not taxed. <laughs> so they're actually yes. gaining. They're, they're basically so they're making gaining. a third yeah. on top of whatever they're doing. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Right. <laughs> they love it. They love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> on your cookie. Uh, who else? Will have you got another one? Yeah. So I know you guys like have heard me a few times talk about um, like Hawaii and uh, Xiaomi. Um, you know, Chinese phone manufacturers that, that are starting to Yalmi. starting to do pretty good, um, but Hawaii um, has actually recorded the largest sale of any phone um, in China in the last quarter. They're actually a fifteen percent above the iPhone sales. Mm-hmm. Um, then they've just released um, Zomi or whatever the other one's called. Have just released their Note Pro, which basically is the same as the S six in specs and everything like that and it's about a third of the price so it's just good to see that some there's you know um a lot of these companies are actually starting to being taken notice of now um uh, what's it called uh hawaii just did in the last in the last quarter in china they just did 13 billion that's that's massive. um you know, whatever that is yeah no, not 13 billion 13 what that's wrong 130 million that's still good. If I read it right, 130 million for for a company that, ah, oh, what 18 months ago wasn't even a thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, it's not people, not a, not bad really. People are getting worried. That, that's Huawei. What do you mean by Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah, uh, how are you? Huawei. Hawaii. 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 That's what are you saying? Hawaii. It's Hawaii. Ma, it's Huawei or the Huawei. Huawei and. I don't know. It's Chinese. It's like, they call it Fred or something, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so I just, I'm just quite I'm quite happy that because what it means basically is now they've got incentive to keep pushing their phones and keep upgrading them and keep improving them and and they're not doing a bad job of them. So it's just something to you know really because Samsung, in, in all honesty, Samsung's been like eighty percent of the Android market for the last couple of quarters. So um, well, yeah, well Samsung's losing market share dramatically, aren't they? They're, they're starting to, but they're not exactly worried at the moment. I've got a uh, a new product that's coming to Australia. It's explosion proof tablets. That's what? the headline. 
<laughs> an explosion-proof tablet. Is that a bathroom tablet? No, but uh, when toilet, you when you get into the story and clarify explosion proof, it's uh, it's a tablet that's safe to be used around explosives. It's the G Tac G E T A C T eight hundred E X eight point one inch device is pitched at taking ruggedness to the next level and can be used in potentially explosive environments filled with flammable flammable gas or dust. Oh. Uh, G Tac and others use the term blah blah blah. Yes, I said that about. It's not to prevent uh, blah blah blah. Is making the t- it starts at three thousand five hundred seventy dollars for the petrochemical and pharmaceutical industries, oil and gas pipeline inspections and maintenance operations. I go. thought, thought you were going to say that it was um, they they'd stop the batteries from exploding by going back to NICADs or something. Yes, <laughs> the uh, it's waterproof, dustproof, impact proof. It comes with Windows Seven or Eight, quad core, eight point one inch screen. 1280 by 800. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, looks all right. Uh, and look, I've also got uh, one more story, but who, who, Warlock, have you got any more? Three. Oh, hit me with one. Peace. <laughs> this is the other anti Apple one. Attackers are exploiting a recently disclosed zero day vulnerability in the current version of Apple's OS X to install adware applications without a system password. Earlier this month, security researcher Stefan Esser publicly disclosed a privilege escalating bug which stems from error logging features that Apple introduced in OS X 1010. He did not report the bug to Apple prior to public disclosure. The bug arose because standard safeguards that are required when adding support for new environment variables to the DL, DYLD dynamic linker weren't used. It means that attackers can open or create files with root privileges that can live anywhere in the OS X file system, even in areas normally out of bounds to those who aren't super users. Researchers from anti-malware company Malwarebytes today said the vulnerability was now being actively exploited by, malicious, by a malicious installer that when run is infecting Macs with several types of adware. The vSearch and GDO Adware and Mac Keeper Junkware are also installed, along with the Download Shuttle File Downloader app without user interaction. Malwarebytes researcher Adam Thomas discovered the exploit after finding the installer had modified the sudoers configuration file. This determines in Unix-like systems who can get super user permissions and is for security reasons inaccessible to standard users. The firm said the modification to sudoers allowed the VS installer app to gain root permissions via running a shell script without needing to enter a password. Part of the script involves deleting itself when it's finished. The real meat of the script, though, involves modifying the sudo's mm-hmm. file. The change made by the script allows shell commands to be executed as root using sudo without the usual requirement for entering a password. There's um, a lot of there's a lot of seems to be a lot of things going coming across and attacking OS X, doesn't there? And I mm. see that uh, that malware bytes now has an Apple an OS X version as well, which is good. They need to now. <laughs> They're going to make bank on that one because oh, speaking before of, uh, people didn't care before so much because Apple had such a low share, but now they're quality the products and everybody is getting them. People, A lot of people get introduced first into the Apple system via an iPhone or an iPad, which everybody buys because the iPad's the easiest thing. You know, my daughter was using it when she was two, mm. knew how to unlock it, launch apps, play the apps, download new apps if she wanted to. And they're like, well, if it's this easy, maybe I'll just get a Mac. They try the Mac. This is great. It doesn't crash. It works. Apple makes the hardware and software so they don't give the third-party driver crashes that Microsoft do. Yeah. And everything just works. So people are like, well, I'm in the ecosystem. Plus, if I buy an app on my phone, I'll get a free copy of it on my iPad. So let's go all Mac. And now Mac's starting to get a bigger slice of the pie. People are like, hmm, maybe we should start targeting that. But you know what's really helped the Macs, though, is their Apple stores. You know, yeah. how, how many times have you bought a laptop and you've, it's just something's happened and you want to drop it in and, you know, you've gone to Harvey Norman. It's, it's just always a big drama. With the Apple stores, and the Apple stores are only here about six or seven years, or maybe even eight years, the first one. Um, if something goes wrong, you just book, make an appointment, you book it down there and it's all taken care of. It's so yeah. easy. That's, that's yeah. I think, and well, their so service is very good. Any product will, will survive and do well if the service is brilliant. Well, well, and they're even willing, if you have the computer's completely screwed in, it's out of warranty, you can get a refurbished one from exactly. them for a discount. Whereas exactly. you go into Harvey Norman or something go, my laptop's rooted. They go, ha! <laughs> yeah, go ah, there's one over there for <laughs> twice the one, price. $600, go get yeah. it. So well, you see, there's a, a story for you, a classic Apple story. My daughter's got one of those 5Cs, the blue ones. Yep. Yeah. 
And what was happening was she, she'd be charging the phone and be on 100% and then she'd be at school and then it'd just die and then she'd somehow get it to start again by plugging it in and it'd start up and it'd say it's 20% and then she'd look at it again and, it, and it's back to 90% and, and it just kept switching on and off, turning off, restarting, blah, blah. And we told them this and we took it to them and she said, oh, look, it sounds like the battery needs replacing. And, you know, I've had iPhones since 2008 and I've never had the, had the battery replaced, right? Mm. So I thought, okay, fine. And he said, look, we can replace that battery for you. Um, it, it didn't, warranty didn't cover it, apparently, because um, I don't know why, but anyway, they said, oh, $109, replace the battery, come back in 40 minutes. I said, fine, no worries. What? Uh, no, 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 well, let, 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 let's hear me out. Because um, my first initial, uh, uh, first reaction was exactly that, what, what Will just said, What? But then they, they noticed that the screen, where's my screen here? The screen on her phone wasn't flush. It was a bit poppy. Yeah. Right? And they said, oh, look, the screen doesn't look like it's holding up well. We'll replace that for you as well, but you won't have to pay for that one because that looks like a, like a manufacturing fault, so we'll get that because that was uh, under, nice. still under warranty. So I thought, oh, okay, fine. So I left the phone with them, came back about an hour later, and they said, oh, look, we didn't replace the battery. We gave you a whole brand new phone, not a refurbished one, never been used before. Nice. Because the battery was swollen. Yeah, right. And that's why the screen was popping yeah. up. Yeah. Right? And she said, yeah. and the swollen battery is a manufacturer's fault. Yep. Mm. So they just gave her a brand new phone, got it off the shelf, took it out of the box, said, there you go. Yeah. Whack yeah. well, your SIM in that. That's yep, pretty good. Chuck the SIM in that. But Brand new, and the good thing is, no while, while you're in there, you could go onto their free Wi-Fi and sync all your stuff down that has been right. saved with your automatic backups. Have you done a speed test on their Wi-Fi? It yeah, is lightning. Good. Yeah. It's, it's nice. about 40 up and 20 down on their Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I still reckon that's a bit rich for a battery because we actually sell the iPhone batteries at work and they cost us about $6.00. Oh, yeah. Well, that's Apple. It's the Apple tax. Everyone knows <laughs> Exactly. Everyone so, knows had, if they had have just replaced that, that's a bit rude. But going, well, back, then, go on. going back to your, the MacBook that you, you know, with the viruses and that, are you saying that you could take an infected computer to Apple and they'll fix it? Oh, sure. look, they probably will. If, if, if you can't, they probably better, it'll give you advice on how to go about it. Mm. They're look, pretty good. Bretto uh, NT in the, in the lounge just asked a question, what's the market share of Apple? Uh, I can tell no, you, market Apple share. Like, all that depends what you're looking at. Desktop, laptop, phone. Well, uh, of um, well, I, I've just got some stats here of the OS X or the operating system, yeah. just to get put it in perspective. Well, I, I know their browser market share is um, on the iOS is quite big, but yeah. I don't know about um, what their actual PC market share is. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, as of July 2015, OS X 10.10, which I guess what's 10 to the 10th. Yeah, what's 10.10? It's 10? only listed here once, 10.10. 10. Yosemite. Yeah, okay. What's well, 4? Oh, right, okay. All what's 4.74%? Right. That's it. Yeah. That's the latest one, yeah. Yeah. It'd be like saying, oh, wait, how much percentage is Windows 10 on computers? Yeah. 80. Well, got, well yeah, my, my, eventually you probably will get to that. Well, you've got yeah. Windows 7, 60.75%. And the rest of them is just made up. Windows this is 8. What's you from? Netmarketshare.com. dot <laughs> com. I am. Well, the on thing is, though, well, people go, oh, how, how can I make so much money? I only got four point eight percent. It's not the issue. It's the margins, and, yeah, and it's there. It's and it's the stuff they they on sell to you. Mm. you know, their traffic worldwide, they they make more money per square meter than Tiffany's, the jeweler, yep. the <laughs> mo the most the the most expensive jewelry store in the world. Mm. They make more money per square meter per year, per week, per month than Tiffany's. I'm going to get a uh, Windows phone. They're, they're about like, you? They're Actually, 80 bucks. Speaking of phones, I think you'll change your mind on the Windows phone. I want you to have a look at this. Have they, have, it is, have they fixed? I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe this. Uh, hang on. I'll have they fixed this. the bloody store? I haven't gone into the Windows store for a while but the, for apps and stuff. But, geez, it's poor the last time I was in there. Which have a look at have a look at that. Oh, here we go. Screen share. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> no. 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 Hang on, I'll move that. You just killed everybody's view. Right. Can you see that? <laughs> no. No. You just broke the internet. I broke the internet. Yeah. You did. 
That's All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll unshare that. You're circling. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, every, is it just... every single person is circling. You're coming for a landing in a minute. What's it doing? It's circling. Oh, hopeless. It's just, we, what do you mean we, circling? I just got a... Got now we can't thing. unbreak it. You got the little circle. Everybody's... Oh, everybody's what? Three circles. for 70... So, 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 what? Seven, seven for 33. <laughs> oh, look. They're going to be they're all out before the we record. finish. They're going to come... How, how, how do, how do they're only going to get to 36. How do I get, how do I get out of uh, unsharing? Well, while you're trying to figure out that... Like, um, I'll continue with a story. We're talking about Windows 10, and I posted a thing on our Aussie Tech Heads thing saying, make sure you're aware yeah. of what you're, what's being tracked. Well, there's a simple... Uh, somebody's actually already done a little open source um, software app that does it. Um, it's... it's by, at the, uh, uh, What's it called? It's, it says it's available at GitHub. I'm going to have to actually click on it. It's called Disable Wind Tracking is the name of the program. And it basically does what it's called. It, it brings up a little box, and you can turn on or off. So you can disable your telemetry, your services, um, block tracking services with host files, that sort of stuff. So yeah, if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, make sure that's blocked and and um, you're not sending, you know, everything from da um, data uploads, Wi-Fi passwords, all that sort of stuff. Um, so currently Microsoft's getting a hold of all that. So make sure you block that, will you? Block it off. Block it off. Uh, I think, Jace, you had a couple more. Let's run through yeah, those. Yeah, the NBN intends to spend almost $40 million to no, attract and train another 4,500 workers in existing telecommunications technologies in order to help its delivery partners accelerate the build of Australia's national broadband network. That's my last story. NBN Chief Bill, Executive <laughs> Bill Morrow the company and its network partners wanted to attract late-stage career workers with telco industry experience to pass on to younger colleagues. Telco veterans choosing to stay on in the industry and work on the NBN rollout can expect flexible working hours to balance work and family, he said. To those with telco experience, there are options to use your skills or become a teacher and coach the next generation of workers. The National Broadband Network company listed a range of occupations needed to meet its requirements, including telco couple cable jointers because we're going to keep our copper network it's awesome <laughs> lines workers cablers telco technicians and electrical lines workers the company is also after school leavers and construction workers in its bid to double its current minimum deployment workforce to nine thousand, so it can meet its objective of providing all australian homes businesses and communities with access to high speed broadband by 2020 now that's five uh, years eh? they reckon five, five years. years that's right Maybe five can... years and everyone's going to be on the NBN. Hooray! I bet you we're not. Wait for it. Now, back on my story there about <laughs> phones, Glenn. I'm not going to share the screen. I'm going to put. You've still link. got no video, by the way. Yeah, got yeah no I know video. that. It's, it, it's coming. I'll put a link on to the Skype chat. And yes. I think, and I'm not a fan of uh, anything that's phone wise that's not Apple, but these phones look bloody great. All right. Oh, have a look at that. Is it the OnePlus One? One yeah. Plus Two? Go and have a look at that. Hang on, let me Shall get me? that up. Now. Willie wants to get a Commodore 64 phone. Oh, yeah. I'm not the only one. Both my nephews want to get one as well because they've both got Amstrad, so they want to get the, so they can run the emulator. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hang oh, on. the Moto X. Yeah, I was looking at this thing. This looks awesome. Don't they look good? Hello, I don't and know. I don't, I, again, I'm being objective. I'm an Apple fanboy, but these look bloody good. That is a really nice, simple phone. So, they, well, are they Samsung? No, Motorola. They look like Motorola. Yeah, you can so... customize yourself. Yeah. Scroll down. It's a Motorola flip phone with a screen, with a touch screen. They're not bad. I mean, they're not super powerful. They're only a, a 1.8 um, Snapdragon. Oh, yeah. Well, but, yeah, it's their first one. You know, they're not, they're not too bad. 3 gig of DDR. They're 132 bucks. or 64 gig options. They're um, 150 bucks in the States. So they're not that expensive either. No, they've got Gorilla Glass 3. They've got... Um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. They've got the water, water repellent nano coating, um, got all the lollipop. networks and the bands covered, it's running lollipop. Yeah, it's got 1080p, 60 frame a second video, captures 4K at 30 seconds. And the rear camera's got closed loop processing, so there you go. Did you register for updates, Eric? No. Oh, you might have to. <gasps> but they, they look good, don't you think? It's got a five banger pencil front novel, camera. It's a novel idea. It's a, you know, look at the first one there. It's a, I don't know, is that I a don't know about phone the, or the, just resting against a mirror? Two phones. Leaning against... Oh, it's a mirror. Yeah, it's a mirror. I don't but, know about yeah. the wood finish. 
I actually well, like choose, that. I, don't, I actually choose, I think that's the best one. You choose yeah, your finish. Right. That's the point of this is why they've got the link to Moto Maker on there is you yeah. can pick... You, you, you can order your own phone. You want, what colours you want. Yeah. And you eventually you'll be able to pick what camera you want in there, how much storage, and yeah. customise the phone exactly how you yeah. want it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's good. It's kind of, the, kind of the next leap from that Google phone that we are talking about um, a while back. It's like Dell for phones. Customise your, your whatever you want to buy, and then they just ship it to you. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not, not too bad. I don't mind it too much, actually. I, I think it looks pretty good. I'm very surprised that I'm actually gushing over something Android. It's, yeah. There you go. There's some more. That's some more of them. Because what they do is they take the um, iPhone ideal and then uh, create an Android phone based on that ideal, and people want it. I mean, I liked my um, HTC One M7 until it crapped out several times, and I had three of them and ended up getting rid of it. But it was just all in one. Everything was built in. No uh, extra memory cards or any of that crap. Okay. And it was great. This is the Australian one, uh, the Moto X Gen 2 AU. Um, the specs are a lot lower, by the way. Yeah, that'd be right. You can uh, name it. Run a 4.4, so it's still running KitKat. Uh, no, actually, sorry, no, I'm not I'm mistaken. Oh, no, it's got a 2.5 Snapdragon, but it's only a quad core. The other one was a 1.8, but it was a 8 core, so they're probably similar. Mm. Um, it's got a separate 5 cent megahertz GPU, so actually, this thing's probably slightly more graphically intense. Only got Low two quality gig of RAM. camera. Well, it's only got two gig of RAM instead of three, and it's only got 16 gig of storage instead of the multiple options. Uh, you get it's a low, well. it's a lower quality, lower quality um, screen as well. Well, it's the same as my phone here. I got this one from Singapore through Kogan. You can't buy that in Australia on Telstra, Optus, or Vodafone because they don't have that model. It's got the eight gig of RAM, thirty-two gig storage. That's just not available. Hmm. Um, Works on Telstra. Eight fifty megahertz is Telstra. Just wait till Kogan gets the official one from the US. It's no, got, you just wait till Kogan makes one of their own and calls it Moto Kogan. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a smaller battery, lower lower camera. Yeah, everything about this is lower spec pretty much. Well, you're it's, better off just ordering it from the States. Yeah, so. I would. It's the same network frequencies. It looks like they've got the same chipset in them, so I'll just buy the one off the States. And honestly, for the sake of an extra 100 bucks, you're getting twice the phone. So. Well, exactly. Exactly. Why? Exactly. I just, why bother? Hmm. Your video isn't come back, Eric. Isn't it? No, 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 you don't have to the internet. There's somebody on my Facebook says that at Ooh. this rate, Aussies will be all out for less than 50. Somebody called Ton- Sonia? Well, I think Darren Lehman <laughs> is going to be sacked because of this. I don't not know because if it's his fault. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe it is his fault. Maybe he's not listening to the selectors. Who knows? It'll all come out eventually. Yes, it will. But, uh, but look, we better um, just quickly get, get rid of the other stories that we have and so we can get out of here and watch the, um, watch the movie on after the cricket. Yeah. <laughs> <We're starting laughs> you need something to fill in the time, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. We can all Mikhail's Navy, that's on soon. I, I Apple do a, if anyone wants to hear it. Oh what? We do an anti Android one. Story. All right, hang on. I think Eric's got one more, so well what can you work on your camera and we'll come back to you, Eric. Okay. I've I've tried my camera and I've turned it off and on and there's nothing working. Cut out. Quit from um all right. call oh. come back in. How gonna how do I do that? You're gonna drag Press me back in if I quit. Can you, can you add me back in? I redialed myself back in. How oh, do you do, okay. how do, you right. do that? Thanks. Attackers can extract data from fingerprint sensors on Android phones remotely due to inadequate protection mechanisms researchers discovered, putting authentication for mobile payments at risk. The biometric security flaw comes as a growing number of serious Android vulnerabilities force Google to provide monthly patch updates for its Nexus phones. Tao Wei and Yulong Zhang of InfoSec firm FireEye will debut their research into fingerprint sensor security vulnerability at Black Hat Conference in Las Vegas. Researchers said severe issues exist within current Android fingerprint frameworks, which had long been neglected by vendors and users. They outlined three specific security problems with the current designs. One, a confused authorization attack is enabling malware to bypass pay authorizations protected by the fingerprints. They also highlighted design flaws within ARM's Trust Zone hardware security framework, which allowed a fingerprint sensor spying attack to harvest fingerprints, as well as pre-embedded fingerprint backdoors. Mm. Wei and Zhang will del- detail their findings, including a live demo at the show. Researchers told them that the uh, affected vendors had provided patches after being notified of the issue. Unlike passwords, fingerprints last a lifetime and are usually associated with critical identities. Thus, the leakage of fingerprints is irredeemable. It will, in fact, be a disaster if the attackers can remotely harvest fingerprints on a large scale. 
Samsung, Motorola, Huawei and Oppo and HTC all currently sell Android devices equipped with fingerprint sensors. Samsung's Knox device petitioning uses an enhanced variant of the ARM Trust Zone Integrity Management Architecture for its Galaxy S6 device. Google recently revealed its upcoming new version of Android, Android M, would for the first time provide OS level support for fingerprint scanners. Yes, well, I suppose, like, if, the, if something's stored in an algorithm, it can be broken, it can be hacked, it can be, you know... Yeah, you've got to be careful about biometrics. Windows 10 has got the biometrics built into the OS, which potentially can make it a lot more secure than, you know, Bob's computer company making his one and then somebody else making another one, somebody else, and none of them compatible. And if you've got a little company and you made a camera that can, you know log you in based on your iris or something like that and it turns out that somebody could take a photo of your face and put it up to the camera and get in mm. which is why the OS 10 one requires you to have a special camera that also has IR detectors so it'll detect that it's an actual person's face that it's logging in with and not just a picture or something like that. Mm. Yes. Yeah, well, there's always, you always hear the stories, you know, like uh, the crooks, you know, if they want to get into somewhere they need a fingerprint, they just cut your finger off. And, yes. uh, and and swipe it or cut your head off, put your you eye out. You won't be able to with IR unless you can heat it up in the microwave and then put it in front. I don't know what the answer would be. Would it be like something like, you know, if you're three wrong, try to get into your phone or something or whatever, it just wipes. You know, you, yep. surely they've got something where it's just, just going to wipe. Oh, it's built into most of them if you enable it. Not everybody turns it on, though. Mm. All right. Um, was that the end for you, Jace? Yeah. Cool. Will? Um, yeah, just a quick one. The, um, <clears throat> there's a watch called the, uh, Luna, or made by Luna, uh, called the Vector. Um, and when Apple was bringing out their watch and Samsung brought out theirs and all this sort of stuff, they snuck theirs in and it looks like a really stylish timepiece, like a really high quality watch. Hmm. Um, and its main attraction was that it was a smart watch and had a digital screen and all that sort of stuff, but it had a 30 day charging time. Um, so it was all good, what? you know, it, it used to, you Say know, that last bit again. yeah, it was, it went for a month, no dramas, um, using, doing everything that the, the Apple watch does or the, you know, the, um, uh, Android watch does nothing, nothing different. It's just designed to be much more efficient and, and low power and all that sort of stuff. And um, I thought you so said anyway, thirty day charging time means it takes thirty days to charge it. <laughs> no, thirty day like, battery what? life. Oh. thirty day no drain. No way. No way. Um, so anyway, so what they're trying, what they're trying to do now, is they're actually um, trying to top that and make the phone even more stylish and more sleek and 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 thin like that. And they're actually trying to put a lifetime um, battery on it. So. They reckon, you know, for like a normal watch, once every eight, ten years, you, you get to replace the battery. Nice. Um, oh, ads. We've got ads everywhere these days. <laughs> yeah, there's just a couple of there. They're the ones, Will, on the screen. They're the vector. I don't know because you haven't shared your screen with us. Mm. Oh, you can't see it, can you? <laughs> I, I do can't get my video up, guys. I don't know what's going on. Technology is I can see you guys. both Glenn and Eric. <laughs> I can see you guys, but I can't. All right. Uh, I can well, see that my screen is on Skype, but it's obviously you can't see it. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. that's right. All, All right. right. Well, no, no matter. Just uh, talk us well, through. My your... last story. Yes, my yes, story. We'll Apple is currently in early talks to launch its own mobile virtual network operator. Hey, in MBO. both the United States and Europe. Dun dun. According to information gathered by Business Insider, a few sources. Here we go. A few sources close to Apple. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Crap. No, you love it. Uh, close Apple. Does that, does that make it an Apple source? Yeah, Apple source. It's actually very good. Um, yep. a, few so a few Apple sources close to Apple suggest that the company is testing the service right now in the United States with early negotiations beginning in Europe to bring the service overseas. If completed, Apple would essentially become its own network carrier, freeing the company and iPhone users from any particular current carrier like T-Mobile or AT&T or even Telstra or Vodafone or anyone yeah, else no, that matter, that. and allow users to pay for the usual data, calls, and tech services directly from Apple. The service would allow Apple to lease space from network carriers already in the business of providing data to customers with the Apple SIM card already included in the cellular versions of the iPad Air 2 and iPad Mini 3. Mm. It's already there. I'll tell, you, I, I'll tell you something I did for the first time the other day was cut a SIM card down to Mini. 
Oh, oh Nano. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nano, yeah. So from an f- iPhone 4S, Nano. I cut it oh, okay. so it fitted into a 5. Yeah, nothing a pair of scissors won't fix. Yeah. Oh, I was pretty happy. I, I didn't like think it would work. like watching your uh, single-sided floppy disks, right? Yep. <laughs> Make it a double-sided. Oh, you can, uh, yeah. you can buy the actual little cutters as well. You can, yeah. Nano uh, SIM card. Yeah, I had one of them. You just put the disk in, you go... Yeah, yeah, very good. It's like a guillotine. What are you doing with scissors? Yeah. yeah. But, but I, if, this, if Apple come out with this in Australia... And I guarantee you it's going to be more reasonably priced because that's how they get people to using their devices. Um, I'm over. I'm done. I'm over to Telstra. I'm over off Telstra. To Apple. To Apple. But they're probably going to lease Telstra space anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, but look. If look. they go with Vodafone, I wouldn't sign up. They yeah. wouldn't. They, Apple's not that stupid. They're going to go with the best network. Well, we, well yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, they'd have to because otherwise no one's going to go with them. No. Maybe they would team up with Dodo. Something. <laughs> All right, let's get yeah, out. Of here. Good on you. <laughs> let's get out of here. What's the uh, what's the quicker score? Did they all get out oh, before no, the end no, of the show? All out for Jack. It's uh, four seven for forty six currently, and I uh, just need to say too that if you look at the latest link in the um, in the chat room that PA has just put up, the little bloodhound has actually come across that same phone that we're looking at, the Moto X with the same specs and everything. So it is available in Australia. Brilliant. Thank you, PA. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that just about. Does us so um, brilliant, excellent. Yeah. Check us out on the Aussie Tech Radio, AussieTechRadio.com. There's us and Tech Webcast, and uh, uh, lots of other ones, including Obsidian Loft and Old Fart Geeks. We need we- to do another Minecraft one when available. We do our Fart our Fart Geeks as well. Mm, eat more cheese. And also the Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, show notes at AussieTechEds.com.au. Now, look, uh, you might want to follow the Twitter news feed, which is uh, something or other. <laughs> I don't know That's what it. it is. <laughs> at something or Some, other. At something or other. Yeah, you'll get something if you do that. Twitter.com slash Warlock. No, it's um, <laughs> it's uh, at Aussie Tech News. That's what it is. That's what it is. At Aussie at Tech News. At com. Right, at Obsidian Loft, yeah. Oh, you guys got a uh, Twitter? Yeah. Uh. At Old Fart Geeks. <laughs> at Obsidian Loft. You guys got an Old Fart Geeks Twitter? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, there well, you go. Wouldn't and they? we thought that you were a big fan from yeah. Minecraft. I know, right? <laughs> Bucky, you've never listened to a show in your entire life. I have. I just don't listen to the probably the end bit. I only listen or to the Or the beginning, or the three bits in the middle, yeah. I'll tell you what I like about that is that I like the music in the background. I don't know if that's... A, if that's yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, like it just... The Obsidian yeah, Loft one was written by a friend of mine, Jeff Burchett. He's over in the US. He, um, a friend of mine was in Australia, and she moved over there and married him. She met him on Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Yeah. Got him. And, uh, She's not I knew good. he was into music, so I said, well, <clears throat> Will, and I found some music on the free music archive, and we played that in the background. Then this guy kept on putting in... Uh, request for music id saying he owned the music and we weren't allowed to have it and they blocked the music from our show for a while and we of the monetization of the show which we don't get any anyway but um and uh, i said look this guy has put it on the free music archive but then he decided to release it as an in an album mm. so then he started chasing up everybody who had his free music yeah. which he put on there for free so yeah. i said to a friend of mine who's who's a musician could you write something for us? And he put together that music that's in the background of uh, Obsidian Loft music. Yeah, nice. Do you reckon we should try music on this show? Well, we've got to try something because voice isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> it's 8 for, eight for Maybe 46, Maybe they'll listen to way. us then. Oh, 8 we, for 46. We might 8 be. for 46. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are they 10 over the... Oh, the Poms they... haven't dropped the catch. Yeah. How, how, had to. How have, uh, we, how have we been getting straight out? Straight to them. Is it all been catches, has it? Uh, uh, a couple slips. of wickets, a couple of uh, yeah. There's, there's a couple LB, of but a lot of them are in the slips, but they're not. They're not. They're all, in their catches. Oh. They've got they five. They've got five slips. Sticky balls. Well, wouldn't oh, I would too. Yeah. The way the Aussies are playing, no, they've got six slips. What? Oh, well, you know what? They're just giving them back what the Aussies gave them when Lily and Thompson were in seven <laughs> slips and a gully. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. What's um? Who won the toss? We did. No, they did. And oh, did they? Oh, they they did won it. They sent us in the bat. And what's the weather like? I suppose Cloudy, I should just turn it on. Conditions? It's, yeah, it's yeah. perfect English conditions. <laughs> Swinging ball, going nuts. It's yeah, well, summer, don't you know? <laughs> Maybe they need uh, like little leg slips well, this is and the everything. Thing. These Aussies don't know how to play in those sort of conditions anymore because not many of them play in England anymore. They used to play in England all the time in the off-season, but now they're too busy on their contracts and their Bentleys. Mm. 
to worry. They go, oh, yeah, well, don't worry about it. And maybe, now they go and play in England, they can't play. Maybe Watson wasn't looking so bad. Yeah, or, <laughs> or, or, or Brad Haddon, for that matter. Well, he was going all right anyway. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> so they, they want a blood, a blood, uh, another wiki. Good. Keep Haddon in as a batter. Oh, the hopeless eight for forty six. Did you hear? Um, did you did you hear the last test? They they how they had the heat lamps on the ground. No. Yeah, they, no. because the the grass or something wasn't growing properly, so they had these heat lamps, you know, on the on the on the ground. Oh, yeah, right. It's always wet. Yeah. Do you know what the heat lamps were? They were no. heat lamps that were um confiscated. The what? Oh, what? They were heat lamps that were confiscated from the from marijuana. <laughs> Plantations. Oh, right, the hydroponic, the hydroponic lab. Right. Nine, nine, nine for forty-seven. So, oh, look, I reckon yeah, if we well. keep, if we keep going, for, we'll just get, well, we'll get, those, we'll get those guys out pretty quick. Michael Clark and now say, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. I got the second highest score, ten. <laughs> look, I reckon if we if we um, keep going for a, another couple of minutes, we might well, just... put it this way: Australia had all were in nine out of two with thirty-six. In 1888, we're 42. In 1896, we're 44. Uh, and then our next one is 1896, we're 53. So I reckon we're going for that record. Hey, by the time we finish the podcast, the Pommies will be batting. <laughs> yep. Well, that's what I'm saying. If we go for another couple of minutes, we'll, we'll have done the whole show. And, and get this, we don't miss anything. And we yeah. can just go 10 minutes before they come back on the field, and we can have a cup of tea and sit down and watch the second innings. The chat room wants us to, to keep going until it's... <laughs> Maybe with a jinx. Oh, look, we go we'll, off, they'll get 300. Well, let's keep, stay on. We'll keep going for one more wicket. Yeah, we'll stay yeah. on one more wicket. All right. Good night, everybody. Good podcast. We're watching the cricket. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so look, there's one more wicket to go. I think I think we're stuffed. Uh, the Ashes will be gone probably by tonight. By midnight, I'd say. Uh, how many tests are they playing? Five? Yeah. Hey? Are they playing five tests? Yeah, they play five tests. It'll be 3-1. Yes. Tonight, and that's it. Ashes over. Yeah, that's crazy Ooh. stuff. Uh, yeah, I was going to say they don't actually need to play the five. Yeah, no. and you know what? So the Aussies will probably flog them in the last two because they'll bring Tony Gregg back from the dead. <laughs> Richie, <laughs> get Richie back. They need to bring back like the when they had um, when they had the celebrity oh, cricket and they had like big. Richie would be spewing now. Oh, he would be, wouldn't he? Oh, he'd be going off. Most pathetic. If batting, if it... <laughs> you know, if I... they, they need to bring back like for the last two, the last two centers. There's not anything anyway. They should bring back like the uh, when they have the celebrity cricket where they had like um, you know, you know who they and... should have as Ted Bullpit. <laughs> it's a bloody shambles. It is. The it's bloody shambles. shambles like they is. They should be having playing there. They put the Australian women's team in there. I guarantee you, they'd get I more. I guarantee than... you, they certainly. Actually, they're doing really well. If anyone's been following they're doing them, unreal. Going I'm going to have to watch here. these wickets. I can't understand. How are they all getting out? Is it all slips catches? It's pretty much. Catches. I think two of, them were, two of them were actual wickets and the rest were slips, I think. The, um, the Elise Perry, the Crick Australian women's cricketer and soccer, uh, Australian soccer player, her dad was my maths teacher. Oh, oh really? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he was a brilliant cricketer. He used to be my maths teacher and my, and my cricket coach. Yeah, right. And they used to live around the corner from us. Holy crap, we hit 50 runs. Oh no! So who's yeah? Okay. Well, <laughs> isn't that supposed to be per per player? He's better, not the entire team. <laughs> well, I reckon. Look, we'll we'll finish it off there. But I reckon we've just about podcasted for the whole of the innings. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. So there you go. That's disgraceful. Not everyone can say they've done that. <laughs> no, we podcasted for the whole of Australia's first innings. There you go. Oh, was that a wicket? Oh, geez, that had to be close. We that nearly had got to it. Be close. We nearly got it. <laughs> So what is it? Nine for 50. Nine for 50. All right. We'll leave it there. I'm going to go and have a cry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Jase. Thanks see for coming in. See you guys next time. All see right. Ya. Thanks, Eric, your circle head. We'll see you next time. <laughs> He's gone, has he? He's gone. Yeah. He's gone. He's just circling He's still. Gone. <laughs> All right. And Will, we'll He's see you next out. week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, Bredo, Bredo wants us to stay for a couple of minutes. You reckon we should? No, uh, I don't know if we. No, it'll be one of those things. That they'll they'll get like five runs over the next three hours. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, no. All right, no. We better we better get out of here. All right. Okay. We'll uh, see you next week. <laughs> Have fun. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>